I'm Doug Roger with Catalyst Telecom, and we're going to be going over a uh, tutorial on how to configure your power demo kit, kit from IP Office uh, for Avaya. Um, we're going to be following a guide that you can get on the partner site from uh, partner.avaya.com, and uh, it's the guide to using the power demonstration kit. When you buy your power demo kit, uh, it's going to come with all the parts you see here. Uh, we have a IP500 control unit, uh, your licensed CD file, uh, an SD card that contains all your uh, software and licensing, the combo card. Uh, this combo card is for the US, so it has uh, analog ports, digital ports, and uh, analog phone ports. Uh, we come with three different telephones here. We have the 1400, the 9500, and a 9600 phone. So we have two digital phones and an IP phone, and then some various power supplies that come with it as well. Uh, so this all comes in the box with your demo kit, and you'll need to uh, assemble some things to get things started. Uh, we've already assembled the button modules here onto the two phones. Uh, this button module has to go on the 1400 phone. Uh, this button module 12 can go on either one of these two telephones, whichever one you prefer it to be on. A couple things we'll need to uh, make sure of is uh, when you get the CD and the SD card, uh, they have a feature key number on them. We need to make sure that those uh, numbers match. Uh, that's very important because this is the uh, license file and it has to match the SD card. Uh, so verify that. If uh, they don't match for whatever reason, you can contact uh, your sales rep here at Catalyst to get you the correct file. Uh, one other item you'll need also is a laptop. Uh, the laptop needs to be um, something that has at least four gigs of memory on it. Uh, you don't want anything too slow to be able to do demos for your customers, and you'll need to install some software on it. So you'll have uh, the admin program and Voicemail Pro running on that laptop. Uh, so make sure it's something that can uh, handle the load uh, of those applications. The next thing you'll need to do is download the software that's required for uh, IP Office. To do that, we'll go to support.avaya.com. Uh, once we go to support.avaya.com, we'll go under the down documents and downloads section and type in IP Office as our product. Uh, we'll choose IP Office release 8.1 since that's the uh, current release. And we'll need to download two different files. The first one is going to be the Voicemail Pro uh, GA release. Uh, we'll see that here. Uh, and this is about a 400 meg download, so we'll need to give it a little bit of time. And then we'll also need to get the administration CD. Uh, the administration CD is a little bit larger. It's about one and a half gigs. Uh, so we'll definitely need to give that a little bit of time to download and um, uh, to get that down. Uh, after we download those files, we'll extract the zip files and then run the setup files that are contained in them. Uh, so if we extract those files, we'll see a simple setup file and we just run that file uh, in order to install the application. Now we're going to go ahead and assemble the uh, IP500 control unit. Uh, we have the combination card that we're going to install in the control unit. Uh, so we simply turn it around here, and we'll take out this first card. Uh, we just need a straight screwdriver. And this card comes off very easily. And then this is going to slide in. Uh, it has some rails here that are going to follow the uh, card slot. Just make sure it's seated in there good, and then uh, tighten up this screw, and we're ready to go. All right, so now this card has enough uh, resources on it to handle all the phones that we have here, and to be able to boot up the system uh, for doing a demo. Uh, the SD card that we have uh, goes in the back of the unit. Uh, so if we turn it around here, uh, we have two slots. We have a system slot and an optional slot. Uh, this is going to need to go in the system slot. Uh, so we'll loosen up this retaining screw and slide this in. A couple other things while we're looking at the back of the control unit. Uh, we have a, um, a few places here to plug in uh, Ethernet ports. And we also have a reset port. Uh, this reset port is good if you ever uh, corrupt your configuration or uh, make a mistake on your configuration. We can always use this button to uh, reset the unit back to default and start over. So uh, now let's go ahead and plug this up. 
and uh, get some things connected. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and connect up our digital phones to the IP office control unit. Uh, the first phone we're connecting up does not have a button module. So because it doesn't have a button module, there's nothing special. Uh, we simply take the power, the cord that comes with the phone, and we connect it into the phone port here on the back. And then we connect it to the digital station port here on the system. We're going to use port number two for this. Uh, so that's all that's required. That phone is connected and ready to go. The next phone here, because it has a button module, it requires an extra power supply. Uh, so we'll have to do a few extra steps there. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is connect up the actual button module to the phone. Uh, so if we take this short cord that was included in the kit, we go from the port that shows a little picture of a phone over to the port that said, says module next to it, and now that button module is connected. Next we need to take a standard Cat5 cord and go from the phone to the power supply. So we'll come out of the port marked for the module or for the phone and we'll go into one of the power supplies that were included with the system. Next we go from the power supply into the control unit. So we'll unwrap a little bit of this cord here and go from our other port into the digital station port on the control unit. And here we're going to use port number one. Then we can power up this phone. And when we have all that connected, we can then power up. When we have all that connected, we can then power up the control unit, and we'll see these two phones come up. Next, we're going to go ahead and connect the IP phone to the IP office unit. Uh, the IP phone, because it uh, goes over the Ethernet connection, we're going to connect it to the back of the control unit. Here on the back of the control unit, we have two ports, LAN and WAN. We're going to use the WAN port for our phone and the LAN port for our, lap our uh, laptop that we're using for the demo. And then we're going to connect up to the uh, 9641 phone here. Uh, so we'll need several Cat5 cables. Um, we'll need the power supply and we'll need the expansion module cable. Uh, first we'll connect up the expansion module. So we flip the phone over and again connect it from the module jack, from the phone jack to the module jack. We then go from the, same, the phone port on the back of the phone into the power supply. Then we're going to go from the power supply to the back of the control unit. And we're going to connect this to the WAN port. Our other Ethernet connection is going to go to the LAN port to our laptop. So we'll take another Ethernet cable and then go from the LAN port to the laptop here. All right, now we have all the phones connected. We have uh, our IP phone, our digital phones connected. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and get everything connected from our laptop. Uh, so when we go to our laptop, the first thing we'll need to do is make sure that our uh, Ethernet connection is configured correctly. Uh, so we're going to go under the Network and Sharing Center and go to the properties of our network connection and change the IP version 4 IP address. So for the uh, default demo system, this needs to be 192.168.42.2. Uh, that's very important to have that address. And we're going to make sure the gateway is the 42.1 address. And then uh, because this is Windows 7, we really need to have a DNS server in here for things to work properly. So we're going to make that the IP office uh, so that everything comes up the way that we need it to. And then we'll see that we have a work network uh, that will allow us to communicate with the control unit. If everything is working correctly, we should be able to launch our IP office program and see our IP office unit we've configured. So here we see our IP office unit has been detected and we're going to log in with administrator administrator.
Uh, so we can see that we've got, we're connected to the system. Uh, we see the phones and the configuration. And uh, everything's ready to start uh, pushing our configuration up to the system. The configuration that we need for our uh, demo system is actually uh, downloaded in some files we got from the partner.avaya.com site. So if we look at the uh, IP Office Power Demo configuration files, we have an IP Office configuration file and some Voicemail Pro configuration files. Uh, so for the IP Office configuration file, we're going to go ahead and push that to the control unit. Uh, in order to do that, we'll open up Manager and we will go to File, Offline, Open File, and we're going to browse for that IP500 configuration file that we just downloaded. Once it's opened up, uh, we can verify that the system is configured the same way that our system is configured. Uh, we have a V2 control unit and a combo card. And then we're going to simply push that configuration file up to the control unit. We'll go to File, Offline, Send Config. And it will search to find our control unit. We'll log in with our administrator password and send up the configuration file. Now currently uh, we don't have any licensing on this system, uh, so we'll need to load some licensing in order to make things work. Okay, in order to load the licensing for our demo unit, we'll need to take the CD that came included with the Power Demo Kit, and we'll need to load that on the computer. We'll need to have Excel installed and we'll open up a file on that CD. So we'll wait for it to load. We're going to open this zip file and copy the Excel file out to our desktop. Then we run the Excel file. We'll have to make sure we have macros enabled and click on the Create All Views. If we don't have macros enabled, we might get an error there instead of being able to create all the views that we need. Once the license files have been created, you'll notice a CSV file created last, and that file has been copied out to our desktop. We'll need to rename that file as license.csv. And then we can import that into our IP Office configuration. So we'll open up Manager. And we're not going to connect to the control unit yet. We're going to do some offline files. So we'll go to File, Offline, Open File. And we're going to select our configuration file that we downloaded from the partner website. And uh, so here we have our configuration that we're going to use during demos. And we're going to go ahead and import some uh, licenses into that. So we go to File, Import, Export, and choose Import. Then we're going to need to change the directory that we're looking for our, uh, see our license file in. Uh, here it's going to be on our desktop. We notice that once we select the desktop that we have the license file available. So we can import that. Now we have licenses in our system. Uh, we have our extensions and users configured. Uh, so we'll go ahead and push this up to our control unit. To do that we go to File, Offline, and Send Config. And it's going to browse for our control unit there. It takes a moment to find it. And then we're going to need to sign in with the administrator, administrator password. All right, so now our control unit will reboot, and we'll wait a moment for it to come back up. Now that we have our IP Office unit configured, next we're going to configure voicemail uh, to work with the system. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go to the files that we downloaded from support.avaya.com and install the Voicemail Pro service. Uh, so here we look at the files we extracted and again just run the setup file. Uh, so we'll click on this and let it run. After it is installed, uh, we'll, it'll make sure the service is running 
and we'll go to our programs list to be able to launch the Voicemail Pro client, uh, which controls the Voicemail Pro programming. And so here we can see we have Voicemail Pro installed. We can tell that it's connected to our control unit, and we're going to need to import a few files. Uh, so those files, we downloaded those with our uh, demo configuration files. So we can see that we have a zip file here that we'll need to run. And it's going to want to extract the files into the Voicemail Pro directory. So it's important that we leave that as the same location. So on a Windows 7 machine, uh, when we extract this file, we have to run it as administrator. Uh, so we'll need to copy it to our desktop, right click, and select Run as Administrator. So you'll notice the file path uh, that comes up by default. Uh, this is important to verify this file path. If we're on a 64-bit machine, we may need to alter this file path. If we're on a 32-bit machine, it's okay to leave it as it is. The proper folder should be our voicemail folder that we have all of our uh, voicemail program files installed into. Uh, so here is going to be the program files x86 directory. Avaya, IP Office, Voicemail Pro, and then the same VM and Waves folder that was in the uh, default path. So when we extract those properly and then verify in our Voicemail Pro client that we can find those files, we'll go to the File, Import Export dialog. Uh, we'll, we're going to import data and we'll simply browse down to that folder. So Voicemail Pro, VM, and then Waves. And we should see an MDB file that we want to import. Uh, the MDB file contains all of the settings for voicemail, uh, so it's important that we get that and confirm that it will replace the entire database. Okay, so now that we've uh, finished this import, we can see that we have some modules that were added and then we have some uh, call flows that were added as well. Uh, so this gives us our complete configuration for voicemail, and we can do some testing to make sure some of this works uh, by following the instructions in the guide. The last piece of software that we'll need to install is the video soft phone. Uh, in order to install the video soft phone, we need to go back to the administration CD that we downloaded from support.avaya, and we'll find a folder there named soft phone. Inside of that, you'll find both a Mac version and a Windows version of the soft phone software, and we'll simply install that. Uh, in order to use the soft phone, we do need to make sure we have a webcam and a good audio device, uh, something with a microphone and an earpiece on it, uh, maybe like a USB headset or a Bluetooth headset, um, and then the video phone will be important for showing that it does video. So once the soft phone is finished installing, we'll go ahead and log it in to make sure it uh, connects. And the login server is going to be our control unit. So here's the default address of 192.168.42.1. And our user for the soft phone is going to be Jane Soft Phone. And there's no password, so we don't need to worry about that field. So now we have our soft phone connected. We see that we have a few users, so we should be able to make some phone calls here. So we'll try calling Brian. And we can see that the call worked. So there our system is set up. We're ready to start doing some demonstration and doing some uh, test calls uh, to show the features of IP Office.